announcements and then we can start the program. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, we're very excited about our program tonight and we'll get started with that in just a few minutes. Um, I wanna let you know what we have coming up in the next few weeks. On um, Thursday, May 5th at 6.30, we have a program called Celebration of Animation, the 100 Greatest Cartoon Characters in TV History. It's a lot of cartoon characters. Um, we have pop culture historian, Marty Gitlin, and he's gonna bring us a very fun and informative presentation. He's got uh, some brief clips from some cartoons. He's gonna tell us how he arrived at the top 100. And he's also got some trivia to play with us. So I think that'll be fun for all ages. Bring the kids to this one if you want, because you know, it's cartoons. Um, it will be virtual though, like tonight. So sign up online like you did for tonight's program. Um, and then on uh, Wednesday, May 11th at 6.30, we have another virtual program called Shipwrecks, Treasures of the Great Lakes. And we have an award-winning shipwreck photographer, Cal Cothred, and um, he's gonna take us on a stunning diving tour of some of the most photogenic shipwrecks in the Great Lakes. Um, he's got some beautiful images and uh, some tragic tales behind uh, the shipwrecks that happen on the tempestuous Great Lakes. Um, and then we have some other things coming up, but uh, I'll get to those next, next time when we, um, when we have our next presentation. But tonight, um, I wanna get started uh, because like I said, this program sounds very interesting. Uh, we have freelance Chicago journalist, and there she is, and sustainable transportation advocate, Lindsay Welbers. Um, she grew up in central Illinois on 100 acres of pristine second growth forest, which sounds very ideal and I'm a little bit jealous right now. Um, and uh, she is, uh, be besides encouraging uh, Chicago area people to get out into nature, uh, she wants to help us to learn how to protect the natural landscape for future generations. So she's written a guidebook called Chicago Transit Hikes. Um, and the great thing is we don't need cars to get to some of these beautiful locations. Uh, Chicagoland area does have a very robust public transportation system. And Lindsay is gonna share with us how we can get to the lakefront, to dunes, to marshes, to rivers, and do all of that. Um, it's within very easy reach and we can use public transportation. So please welcome Lindsay Welbers. Hi, thank you. Uh, thank you, Janet. That was amazing. And thank you to the Rolling Meadows Library. It's, uh, I'm, I'm really happy to be here, um, even if we're, we're all presenting virtually. Let me get started. Oh, I'm spotlighted. Hi. All right, let me get started. Hold on, we'll start at the beginning. All right. Hello, my name is Lindsay Welbers. And I am the author of Chicago Transit Hikes. It is a guidebook for getting out in nature without a car. And I'm so glad to be presenting for you tonight here at the Rolling Meadows Library. <clears throat> I am a, in my day life, I'm a writer, editor, backpacker, Midwest adventure seeker. I, I just like to be outside. I am a lifelong Illinoisan. I've always lived here. I, I think, you know, all the other states are cool and, and all, don't get me wrong, but I've just, I've always been here. Uh, most of my time uh, has either been, if I'm not living in directly in the city of Chicago, I was living in the woods. And now I'm fortunate enough that I kind of get to walk the line between both. The Cook County Forest Preserves are not at all far from my house. So that rules. Um, I spend a bunch of my time, my free time over on thirdcoasthikes.com where I blog about the outdoorsy stuff I see around here. Um, but yeah, I've moved to Chicago in 2006 and I kind of just haven't, haven't exactly left. I keep wandering into the woods, but I do keep coming back here. And it's not that I'm anti-car, although I am a little anti-car. Um, I do have a car, it's super cool. It's a 1994 Ford Thunderbird and every year that passes, I don't wanna buy a new car. So that was part of the reason I wanted to, to get just better understand where it is that I could go around here, get out and get, get immersed in nature not have to spend so much money on a car. So <clears throat> if I have a car, why, why would I take the train anyway? Um, even if my car wasn't an old clunker, it's okay. The train is relaxing. I can chill, I can watch the scenery roll by, I can read a book, 
I don't care about gas prices. It's really fun to not care about gas prices. Uh, plus riding the train, it's sustainable for a greener future. So it keeps the area around these natural spaces just a little bit cleaner every time I, I don't drive there, I take the train. Uh, the car is not relaxing. Fuel and maintenance costs are so expensive. Um, time spent idling in traffic is so stressful. The toll roads are dumb. I think the Edens is out to get me. Other drivers are jerks. You can't take a nap. You know, you know all the reasons. Like, this is so stressful for me. I hate driving. So how did Chicago transit hikes come to be? <clears throat> I moved to a new neighborhood. I used to live down in Logan Square for about uh, about last 10, the 10, 10 years or so. And it was really easy to feel like I was connected to nature. You know, I had the boulevard systems, uh, Pullman, uh, Palmer Square was right there, Logan Boulevard, the 606, Humboldt Park. It was really easy to feel like I was immersed in nature the whole time. But I moved to a new neighborhood. I'm up here in Jefferson Park now. And I wanted to explore all the green spaces that I could get to from my new place. Like, sure, I have a backyard and everybody else around here does too, but it's, it's different. It just feels different. So once I moved here, I spent a lot of time staring at maps and I got really familiar with the Metra system. I like Metra, I've always liked Metra. Um, so once I figured out where is it that I wanna go, how do I wanna get there? I stared at maps for a long time and I found where all the green spaces exist around the Chicagoland area and where they are in relation to the transit system. And so once I'd repeated that and I knew where, where I could go on the train line that runs nearest my house, I just did that for everybody else. And bam, I had a book at the end. So that was fun. Um, then the second draft, which was the most fun draft, I absolutely visited as many as I could. It was a lot of winter hiking and it was the best. I, if I could just rewrite this book as a full-time job, but that's imaginary. Um, so when, when I was deciding all of this, like it, there's a lot of places you could go to, but a lot of places didn't necessarily make the cut. So what was my methodology in deciding what was a suitable transit hike option? One, is this place actually accessible from the train? There are some places where if it's too far from the train station or the way the infrastructure is built, you literally cannot get there on foot. That place did not count, not a good transit hike. Um, for simplicity, and this is one of the many ways that we're super blessed in Chicago, I got to ignore the bus, which was fun. I like the bus, I support the bus, but I get motion sick, so I just, said, no, no, no bus, please. Um, I had to draw a line somewhere. I bet if I included the bus, I could find hundreds more places. I, and I don't doubt that at all. Um, so there's a third one. Is it worth it? If when you got to that park, it was like too small or just like a little neighborhood park, um, just a little neighborhood spot, too small, just not worth it. Okay, then that was not a suitable transit hike. So once I'd eliminated those three things, you know, here, here, here's how you get booted off. There was so many more things than I thought. On that topic of, is it worth it? For some reason, Chicagoland has this reputation that we don't have abundant green spaces or we, this is not a natural landscape. And there's no reason for that because it's actually crazy beautiful around here. I was able to fit about 30 hikes in the book. And by that, I mean 30 individual spaces, 30 separate places that you can get to using only the trains, mostly Metra, sometimes CTA and the South Shore Line. There was another dozen spots that I, I just couldn't fit in the book because my publisher said I had a word limit. So I, I literally ran out of space, but there's more out there. And then at least another dozen I found that just kind of very close, but didn't quite the, fit the criteria. They were a little too small or a little too far away, or sometimes they cost money. And so it's like, pff, we can go to three places, but there's so much more out there than you expect. How much nature did I run into? A diversity of landscapes. We are abundant with rivers, bluffs, lakes, fens, swamps, dunes, beaches, bogs, prairies, forests. We have dozens of historical sites and I found one natural waterfall. We have one. I found it. Uh, so there's something for everybody regardless of their age, their, their mobility concerns, or their outdoorsiness. So maybe you, you know, grandma, she loves to take a hike but her old knees can't handle it anymore. I have an option for her or your posh cousin is coming in from out of town and they, they don't, they've never spent more than 20 minutes outside and had fun, I have something for your posh cousin, don't worry. I found six campgrounds, that's two hands guys, that you can get to around Chicago land without a car, six. Um, I found big adventure hiking spots. I'm a big adventure hiker. I like, I like big adventures. I like to 
get sweaty and dirty and hang out outside for a long period of time. But I know that that's not fun for everybody. So I also found smaller, simpler little hiking spots for simpler little adventure seekers. And I think there's a lot in there that make a lot of people happy. Uh, and just honestly, more outdoor spaces than I had even space for. So we're, we are very blessed around here. Um, now, when I wrote this, it was in a, a pre-pandemic world. So what challenges did I run into in that universe? Hopefully, as we move forward into a new one, I don't run into these challenges anymore because that means nobody else will either. But the main, the main hurdle to making uh, this, a, to making a transit hike, it was that the trains didn't run frequently enough. And, you know, there, I think, I think Metro is taking another look at that as they're trying to attract new riders. Like maybe we don't need to focus exclusively on people who are commuting to work. Maybe we can go and provide service for people who just want to have fun. Recreational train riding, yeah. But that was my main challenge is the trains just don't run, that didn't run frequently enough. Some places just are plain not accessible. If I can get you, you know, to the train, off the train, but um, it's but not physically to the trailhead after that, Oofed, um, oofed. So a great example of this is the Southwest Service and the Heritage Corridor lines. There's two separate train lines that are on the Southwest side. Um, and I, when I was writing the book, I actually put those two train lines off towards the end because I thought they were going to take up so much of my time I wanted to save them for last because they both run adjacent to the Palos trails or the Palos trail system down in the Southwest suburbs. And that is just the biggest, most dense concentration of green space that exists all around Chicago land. So in my mind, this chapter is gonna take forever. There's so much to say. That was not the case. I was so disappointed because you, both of those trains at the time that, that I was writing the book, hopefully it's changed now, run into the city in the morning and they run out in the evening and they don't really run at all on the weekends, which means that everybody who lives along the Southwest service line and the heritage corridor lines, if they want to visit the Palos trail system using the train, that's not exactly possible. I found a very convoluted way to do it. If somebody actually does do it, please let me know. I have about a billion questions. Because my point is, if you have these utilities and you have these green spaces, but the people who live on the utilities away from the green spaces can't get there, does that place exist for them? And there we can get into some issues of oh, economic and social justice and all that. But mull on that one a bit. If the trains just ran, to the payload system every day, gosh, wouldn't that be great? Like easily one of the best hiking spots in the city. It would be so easy, but that's not the world. That's okay. We're working on it. When you do get out and moving around, what, what is it you can do when you get outside around Chicagoland? There's so much stuff, you guys. And it's, not, it's far more than you think. Like, I'm not gonna read all of this list, but I can point you to where they all are, including the trapeze, the scuba diving sites, uh, rustic trails. I can find those for you in the city of Chicago. Uh, drone operating sites. There are a few. We have so much more to do around here than you think. So it's, we're crazy blessed around here. I'm really pleased about it. So you've decided you're going to take a transit hike today. Congratulations. Let's start planning. What are you going to bring? Well, the, the major downside in taking a train versus taking a car is that in your car, you can have all the stuff in the world. You don't really care. It's a mobile living room, basically. You don't have to pack it all on your back. But when you're taking a transit hike, you got to carry it all with you. So I recommend you bring a backpack and you put all your stuff in there. Uh, good fitting one conditions, um, you know, keep it in good condition. So it's, you know, it, it's a part of you at that point. Uh, you want to make sure to bring your phone with a spare battery and a charger just in case you don't want to be caught, you know, dead in the woods and not know how to get out. You want to drink plenty of water. Dehydration is no joke. So please drink one liter of water for every two hours that you spend hiking. And that's a minimum. Uh, you want to bring a snack or a lunch. Low blood sugar is no joke. Um, you can bring your camera. I and, I and I do sometimes, but a lot of the time I will just bring my phone. Uh, notebook and a pen, especially if you want to you know, make friends with somebody on the train, you can play tic-tac-toe with them. Uh, you want to wear comfortable walking shoes. And this is really important because you're going to see a variety of trails and trail systems. You're going to be on your feet all day. You want to be comfortable. So those cute flats are super cute, but are you going to walk in them for a couple hours? Think about it. Uh, you want to bring sunscreen or bug spray, depending. And I'm going to say sunscreen all year round. It's good for you. 
Um, you want to bring a spare plastic bag, like even just a grocery bag is good because you get one point for every piece of trash that you pick up on the trail and you get to make up all the other rules surrounding that point system. So that's a lot of fun. And you want to bring the right clothes for the weather. It gets cold. You saw yesterday's weather around here. It was wildly different than today's. So I'm going to just generally speaking, especially if it's cold or it's rainy, please don't wear cotton. Uh, cotton's a very bad insulator. And when it's right up against your skin, if you get cold, you get wet. That cotton actually makes you colder. Please don't wear cotton. Polyester is better. I like wool, but I'm a little, I'm a little bougie like that. Uh, so those are, those are easily the things you absolutely ought to bring. What you should not bring, don't bring too much technology. You're trying to disconnect, go connect with nature, leave it alone. Bring your phone, that's got all you need. <clears throat> you can't bring any weapons. Handguns are prohibited by law on, a, on all public parks in Illinois. Thanks, Illinois. Uh, you can't bring anything that you would use to vandalize stuff or you risk a lifetime ban from all Illinois parks and a hefty fine and it's rude. So please don't. Um, try not to bring more than you're willing to carry. And, and I mean that a, a, a 10 pound backpack sounds fine for the first hour, maybe on the second hour, you're getting a little tired. Um, 10 is a low estimate. Try to avoid, stay lower than 20 though. And the number one thing I don't recommend that you bring is a bad attitude because Chicagoland has an astonishingly diverse array of prairies, savannas, meadows, bluffs, morans, dunes, swamps, wetlands, rivers, and lakes. So if somebody has told you that these things are too flat or boring to be interesting, I want you to take that notion and just leave it on your kitchen counter and you can revisit it when you come back, but please don't bring it with you. I think you'll have a better time without it. Uh, some helpful apps for when you're getting around. Google Maps is really helpful because especially if you're going to a suburb or a place that you've never been before, you're, if you're familiar, just help you, help you to get where you're intending to go without you know, looking like a rube, confused about where they're going. Google Maps, the Ventra app is great, especially if you're gonna be on Metra, it'll help you manage your CTA. Uh, Metra and Pace tickets if you're interested in doing Pace. Uh, the South Shore Line has its own app, which I do recommend if you're going to be using the South Shore Line, which you can do to Indiana Dunes. Indiana Dunes. Um, I know you guys are, I don't think you're in Lake County, but you're very near Lake County. So if you find yourself in Lake County, download the Lake County Forest Preserves app. It's called Lake County Forest Preserves, and it has a downloadable maps for all their parks, and Lake County has some super cool parks, so I'm a big fan of that one. And then these are two separate apps. They're two, but they do the same basic thing. One is called Seek, is another is called Picture This. So if you're out in nature, you say to yourself, that's a beautiful plant, that's a beautiful flower, I don't know what it is, take a picture of that thing, and it'll use uh, artificial intelligence, it goes boop, 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 try and help you identify what it is that you're looking at. So that can just help you a little bit better understand the natural world in which you're hiking. So seek or picture this. I like seek, but picture this has its merits. I'm not, I'm not, no one paid me on either one. And we're not, we're, we're, we're gonna get into this. So how is it that you do get around when you, when you get in Chicago? We have a hub and spoke system. That's the way we laid out our transit system. So if downtown Chicago is the center of the wheel, we are all radiating out from that. And as or because Chicago is how we are, we don't have one massive transit hub downtown. We've got like four or five. So your Metro train can end at either Millennium Station, Ogilvy, Union Station, or LaSalle Street. So it helps to have just a very clear idea of what, what, your, what your travel plan is day to day. Um, those are all fairly near each other. You can easily walk to all of them, but if you have to get off at Millennium Station and then and transfer over to Union, you just want to know, you just want to know. Um, to use the CTA, it helps to have kind of a general understanding of how Chicago's geography is laid out. So for the red line, we didn't, we didn't name our, our, our train directions based on what direction they're headed, we named them based on the destination that they're headed. So it helps to know that 95th Street is in the south, and that Howard is on the north, and all of that. So we can revisit this if anybody has any questions. There's a lot to read. I'm not going to read it all to you. Just understand that's that's how we get around. <clears throat> so how do you get around specifically on Metra? Metra is our big commuter suburban transit system. Metra, I love Metra. I really they don't pay me to say this, but they should. Um, sincerely adore them. And they are fantastic. They they it's the number one transit system that you use to go transit hiking, which makes some sense, right? Because it gets so far out into the suburbs away from the city. 
into, into nature. Um, cost for Metra is determined by distance. So that's, so if I start here in Jefferson Park and I head downtown, let's say it costs me $5. That's a, I pulled that number out of the air. So look that up. Um, but if I wanted to start up there in Rolling Meadows and go all the way downtown, it might cost $7 because I'm traveling just a little bit further. So that's how those do. That's how those are done. Um, Metra, the easiest, the easiest way to do it is to download the Ventra app and purchase your Metra tickets through there. That's just the easiest way to do it. Um, I, I will even hold off on purchasing my Metra ticket until I'm standing physically on the platform. It's just simpler. Um, buy it right there in the app. Um, in terms of getting around your local Metra station, I would love to honestly tell you that every Metra station has excellent signage but I'm not here to lie to you. I wish they did. They don't. So in terms of figuring out where, when you get to your train station, where your train is physically coming and where it is that it will be going to, where it is that you should stand in relation to all that, it's okay to ask for help from your fellow riders. It's better to, it's better to, to bother somebody, have them pull their earphones out for a minute, ask, is this the train to Chicago? They'll either say yes or no, and you won't be caught on the wrong side of the tracks when the train comes, literally the wrong side of the tracks. Um, when your train does come, your conductor will step out of the open doors. The fun thing about Metra is not every train, not every door to the train opens at every station, right? So you could be standing in the middle of the platform, train pulls up right in front of you, but the door in front of you may not necessarily open. The ones that do open, a conductor will stand out, step down. So see the conductor, he's got the hat, wherever that guy is, that's where you can go in. Uh, the conductors are nice. I, I like the conductors a lot. I think they keep the peace on Metro and I think they make it a very nice place. Um, they will come around and help you redeem your ticket. So if you bought it on, your app, uh, on the app on your phone, they will ask you to show them your ticket. You'll say, I want to spend this ticket and it'll give you a little video of a train scene. The conductor may ask you to tap the little video and that's just so the conductor knows that he's looking at your ticket and not just a little video of the train scene. Uh, once, you're, once you're on a train and it's rolling and you're headed where you need to be, you, you can relax. That's the best part. Watch the trains go, but like just watch the tra trees roll by. We have some beautiful landscape around here. Plus the Metro rolls through some like stunningly beautiful little suburbs and towns. So it's just fun to watch. Um, um, keep an ear out though, or you can watch on your phone if you'd rather, and just keep an eye on where you are. They'll announce the trains, uh, the station before they get there. So just keep an ear out for yours. Um, if you see, yeah, and that, that's the basics of how, how it all works. <clears throat> now, when you get there, if you're traveling in the middle or yeah, I guess it would be the end of the day or the beginning of the day there, you might see a car there's a, with like a sticker on the outside and it looks like a video of a shushing woman or picture. That's the quiet car. And I love the quiet car. It's just an idea of, you know, people who are sick after the workday, they just want to sit quietly. They don't want to listen to too much fuss. This is the car where everybody agrees to keep quiet. That's a good idea. Please respect the quiet car. That said, the exact opposite of the quiet car is the family car. Those tend to run in the middle of the day and on the weekends. And it's, it's if you've got your kids on the train, this is the family car. You make all the noise you want in the family car. It's a good car. It's a good car. There's a lot of cool places to take your kids. Um, drinking alcohol is allowed on the metro. So if you want to feel, you want to feel a little fancy after your hike, have one beer, uh, have a two beers. That's fine. Metro won't be bothered. That said, if you act like a jerk, they can and will kick you out, and then you might be literally in the middle of a cornfield with with no ride home. So behave yourself. Um, bikes and e-scooters are super allowed on metro, and I. I love bringing my bike on Metro. It's one of my favorite things in the world. So please do consider it. It can really, especially if a big adventure hike seems like too much for you, but you don't want a little hike, bring a bike on the train, bring a bike on it. It'll extend the ability that you have to hike or ride really far. You can get a lot of good mileage and see a lot of good stuff, but you're on a bike. It's a lot easier on your knees. You can bring your pets on the Metro. It's a little tricky. They like them to be under 20 pounds. They like them to be, um, fit in a carrier. So that excludes my dog. Sorry, but um, in terms of what it is that you can physically bring on the Metro, the rule is that as long as you can carry it without help, it's allowed. That's the rule. So you want to bring, you know, a big cooler full of snacks and drinks for all your friends. 
that's fine as long as one person can carry that cooler without help. Uh, in terms of when you're waiting for your, your train, um, my best advice is just to get there a little bit early. So if the schedule says it's going to arrive, let's say at 10.53 p.m., I would recommend showing up 10.40, 10.45 at the latest, because it might show up early. I've seen it happen. More likely, it, no, it won't, but <laughs> I've seen it happen. And, and that's even less of a concern, but it gives you that, that little bit of time to get oriented, to figure out where I'm going, where do I need to stand? Um, where is the train coming from? So just get there a little bit early. Of course, Metro is not the only way to go on a transit hike. There's also the CTA. Yay, what is the CTA? It's more like the circulatory of the system, uh, system of the city. So it works pretty differently than Metro does. And instead of basing cost on uh, distance, it's $2.50, wherever you wanna go. What a good idea. Uh, it's also on the Ventra system, but I think you have better luck using the Ventra card. You can manage all your, the stuff on your card through the app, but I like the, the card itself for just tapping on the turnstiles and getting on my way, um, which is exactly what you do. The signage is usually better on CTA stations. I'm not going to say it's perfect, but it's usually pretty clear where it is that you're going, where you're going to, and all the doors open on every train at every station. So the train gets on, you get on. Um, and after that, just watch for your stop. Just keep an eye out. And like I said, there's it's always better to ask your fellow riders if you are if you're confused about where you are or where you're going, because literally we've all been there. It's okay. It can be it can be a little help. Just ask for help. It's okay. Um, as simple, is this the train to the Garfield Park Conservatory? Or will this get me to Northerly Island? Stuff like that. Just you don't have to make a big thing out of it. Uh, you can bring your bike and e-scooter on the CTA. And again, I recommend you do, but they are a little fussier about rules. Um, so check, into, I think it has to be outside. You can bring it on a train, uh, leaving the city in the morning after nine and come into the city. I'd have to double check that. They're very specific rules. So look it up where it is, your, where it is you, uh, it, when and where you can bring your car, uh, your bike on the CTA, but please go right ahead and do it. Folding bikes are always allowed, actually. There are no restrictions on folding bikes. Um, I have met some very nice dogs on the CTA, but apparently they weren't supposed to be there. So that's too bad. Um, drinkings, eating, and smoking are all prohibited on CTA vehicles. So it is, it's, it's, a, it's less relaxed than on the Metro, but it's doing something different. And the South Shore Line is the other truly great thing for getting out in, in, into nature around Chicago because the South Shore Line takes you directly to the Indiana Dunes. Yeah. Um, the cost, uh, is, it operates in many ways a lot like Metro. Uh, cost is based on distance. They have their own app and that's the South Shore app. It departs Millennium Station exclusively. Um, but beyond that, it pretty much operates exactly like Metro. They do have Wi-Fi on the train though. So that's one thing they have over Metro. And if you're gonna bring a stroller, they like it if you please use a collapsible one, they will not help you bring it on the train yourself. They're, they're a little fussy about that. And they're even fussier about bringing your bike. They didn't say no bikes, but there are restrictions on which dates, what train, where you can bring it on, when you can take it off. So just check the website, see if you can bring it on your trip, but it's possible. All right, all right, now we're to the meat of it. Right now, April 14, 2022, where can you, the people surrounding Rolling Meadows Library, go hiking? The obvious answer right away is the Des Plaines River Trail. You can, I, and I looked for all the ones that are most easily accessible from, from Rolling Meadows. So get on the Metro line, head a little south to the Des Plaines, get on to the Des Plaines River Trail. It's super cool. It can be a little muddy, especially, you know, days like today where it, it's been rainy, might be muddy today. Flooding can be an issue, but it's there, there all the time. Um, it's you, you would most likely enter just a little north of Campground Woods Road, and it's so pretty right there. So you're in good spot. Um, Vireos and warblers, like people like it there. People like it. Um, they have beautiful fishing. Um, you can actually fish for pike, I want to say, on the Des Plaines River Trail. I want to say it's an axe head lake, but please double check that for sure. There, yeah, there's a lot to do. Um, someone told me there are bobcats. I hope it's true. I've never seen it, but I have seen the box and the soft shell turtles and I kind of lose my mind every time I do. I've seen foxes there. Um, the trail runs 
from more or less Chicago all the way up to Wisconsin. It's not always contiguous, but if you want to get a lot of mileage in or just see a lot of cool stuff, Des Plaines River Trail. That's where I'd start. Uh, another place that's not far from you guys is the Cuba Marsh. The Cuba Marsh is easily one of my favorite places I visited when I was writing the book. Like, that place is stunning, just stunning. Um, it's just a little off the Barrington Metro stop. It's just a little further, um, but it's got, it's so gorgeous, like crazy gorgeous. It has this wide accessible boardwalk that basically lets you walk at the tops of the tall grasses. And it's more or less the only way you can get through this marsh we're looking at here because it's too marshy down there. <laughs> it's just, it's not walkable unless you're a deer. So deer are pretty easy to spot. So are birds, especially birds of prey. This big wide open field, all those little varmints down there, birds of prey. So hawks, hawks, eagles, all those. This is where you get to see them. It has a few elevation changes. It gets a little hilly. So again, it's not always flat around here. We have hills, they're not the biggest, but they're there. Um, and the, the coolest thing when you're accessing Cuba Marsh, if you wanna go through Citizen Park, which is actually not at all from their far from their library, um, just what they now call Citizen Park used to be the Jewel Tea Company. And it's been turned into this just beautiful park. I think there are beavers there. I saw a beaver, I remember that. Um, and the, the Pepper Family Treehouse is located within Citizens Park and the Pepper Family Treehouse is especially cool, especially if you've got kids, this is a good one for them. It's a fully accessible tree house. So even if you're, you've got mobility issues or you just, a ramp makes more sense for you, this is, this is a super cool spot, fully accessible into the tree itself, a big, beautiful tree. And the Pepper family tree house is that it's just architecturally beautifully done. Like somebody, somebody wanted to make something truly fun there. Probably the Pepper family, I don't know who they are. Um, so that's an absolutely cool one. It's, and I'm, I'm a kids for all ages, including me, I'm an adult. That was a lot of fun. I had a blast. I like Cuban Marsh a lot. Uh, another one that just blew me away that I, that I learned while I was writing this book is Veterans Acres and Stearns Woods and Fen. That's its full name. It's not far from Crystal Lake. So it's just a little bit further north from you guys. And it is easily, as far as I'm concerned, one of the most pretty dang spots around the Chicago land area. It's half a mile from the Crystal Lake Metro area uh, stop. So it's what, a five, 10 minute walk, super close. They have a nature center. So, and it's a beautiful nature center. Like I wandered inside, it's a little blown away, truly gorgeous in there. Um, especially good for kids. So that one's a good one for kids. Um, when you get past the little nature center, you go around the, end up in the Wingate Prairie. The Wingate Prairie is partially a remnant prairie. What's a remnant prairie? A remnant means that we never overturned it. We never plowed it. We didn't, we left it alone. Colonization happened. People, people who look like me showed up and for whatever reason, we left this one alone. And it is stunning and beautiful with gorgeous rocks. Big, uh, we call them glacial erratics. They're called glacial erratics. And they're, you know, those gigantic boulders that you just see around that kind of don't look like they belong anywhere. That's most likely left by a glacier when it melted 10,000 years ago. And now there it is sitting in somebody's front lawn. They're all over the place in the Wingate Prairie. I like that place a lot. Oh. When you get past Veterans Acres, there is a, it runs into the Prairie Bike, Prairie Trail Bike Path, a 56 long mile, 56 mile long bike path. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not speaking right today. Um, and that I think can get you up to the Wisconsin border. That's a really cool one. Big, wide, flat, paved, gorgeous. Um, once you get past the bike trail, now you're into to Stearns Woods and Fen. And uh, they have, that's where you find it, some real elevation changes. And I don't mean like a little hill that I'm being generous about. I'm like, no, no, that's a good hill. Um, to, to summarize, there's one big loop and then a bunch of smaller ones in Stearns Woods and Fen. But if you stick to the one big loop, when you first arrive from the path I've just described, if you take a right, You'll follow a very gently sloping, gently slope down, won't bother you at all. When you come back around, boy oh boy is that slope steep. So that, that one had my hamstrings very upset with me. If that sounds like a fun time for you, I recommend it. I had fun, I had fun. This is, this is my idea of fun. That said, you do it the other way around, do the steep part down. It's a very gentle slope back up. You probably won't even notice the elevation change. Um, what else is going on at Stearns Wooden Spent? 
Stearns Woods and Fence so much. Um, when you get down this part we're looking at here, this is just to the right of this is where the fen starts. What is a fen? A fen is literally a bog, but it's acidic. It's basically the exact same thing as a bog, but instead it's acidic instead of basic. That's it. Um, and because of that, it's a, such an interesting and unique ecosystem. It's pretty easy to find like truly gorgeous flowers here and rare orchids, rare native Illinois orchids. Go find them. There's more than you think. Uh, this place was absolutely buzzing with wildlife. I think there was a, I think it was a field of, it must have been goldenrod when I was there because it was just, the air felt like it was alive with goldfinches. I could not have turned around without, without seeing a goldfinch. So this place is abundant with wildlife. Uh, another good one is, this is actually two, but they're in the same town, so I'm counting it as one. This is up in Woodstock, so just the tail end of where you guys, the, of your metro line. They have two really great parks that I, I have a lot of great things to say about. Riders Woods is a small, it's only 23 acres, but it's so densely packed with just the woods. I, and I think it's, I don't know if it's exactly a remnant, that's not the word we'd use for it, but I got the distinct impression that we didn't screw up Riders Woods. The, the fine people who moved in and wandered around Woodstock said, no, this place is nice. They never developed it. They didn't clear cut it. It's gorgeous. And it is, there's, I think three or four little dunal ponds, some, or not dunal ponds, um, vernal ponds, three or four. Some, it depends on the season, right? Um, and I'm just alive with frogs. Like you can, don't even need to see the water and you can hear the frogs. Uh, another, and it's not far, is a place called Emerickson Park. Just a little further, um, I wanna say north of Riders Woods in, in Woodstock. Emerickson Park is really good, especially for kids, little kids in particular. It's uh, small, it's wooded, it has tons of activities. They've got two nature centers, two. One park, two nature centers, bonkers really, really good for kids. If you can do the extra, I think it's like a half mile, maybe three quarters of a mile jog between the two, that's a big day. Uh, but for me, Riders Woods. Um, yeah, There is an easy walk between those two parks, but I guess it is not ADA compliant because that's the road. That is the note I wrote for myself. Um, but it is pretty easy to walk between the two if you're like me, a big or even a medium adventure seeker. And then the big one, you probably, you guys probably all know about it, but the biggest, most like I was really excited about Deer Grove when I found this time to write for the book. Deer Grove is easily one of my top places for, for a big adventure hike in the Chicagoland region. And the reason I have to count it as a big adventure hike is because it's it almost didn't make it into the book at all because it takes a whole three miles between the train station and the, and, and the park itself. So at first I said, Lindsay, that's way too far. That's not even fun for you to walk three miles. Then I found out that there's a path from the Palatine Metro Station, the Palatine Trail, leads you directly to Deer Grove. So it's a three mile long trail, sure, but it's completely separated from traffic. You can bring a bike, you can just walk if you like. Counts, I counted it. Um, and when you get there, because you've already had a pretty good hike in you, you're, you're warm, you're ready to go. Don't worry because they've got Camp Rheinberg. That's one of the six campgrounds you can find in Chicagoland. And this is the only one I think that offers year round camping, year round. So you can do a whole winter thing here if you like. They have cabins. So if you don't even wanna rough it, that's allowed too. The cabins are heated. So good luck. Um, but, but once you're there, you've got 15 miles of trails and some of them are pretty tough. Like some of them are big and wide and easy and you can ride a big, a big nice bike and just very flat, very paved, but then there are other skinny little muddy guys. That's fun for me. So there's such a variety of got kinds of trails to be found in Deer Grove. No matter what kind of trail is best for you or what sounds fun to you, there's something in Deer Grove that will work. Um, they've got beautiful prairies. We're looking over one. They've got aviation fields. This is one of the rare places around Chicagoland where you're allowed to fly your drone. So if you like drone flying, this is a good spot, have fun. Um, model airplanes and allowed. So Deer Grove, those are my, those are, I love Deer Grove. That's one of my favorites. Um, so thank you all for coming. Um, that's kind of my end. I am once again, my name is Lindsay Welvers and I'm the author of Chicago Transit Hikes, a guide to getting out in nature without a car. You could pick up a copy at your local library, but if you'd like one of your own, I recommend you purchase it directly from Belt Publishing because not only because they were kind enough to publish me because they 
are genuinely an excellent couple, an excellent publishing company. And I think they understand Chicagoland and probably the whole Midwest better than any other publisher I've ever seen out there. Uh, so thank you for joining me. Are there any questions? See, was there one in the chat? Um, I don't see any questions, but um, that was great. <laughs> I really yeah. enjoyed that. And there are there's so many places so close by. So many. And like Way you said, better. I love the train for the same reason, because I love to read. I can just get on the train and read. Yes. <laughs> not have anybody at, not have to deal with traffic or anything like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's easily one of the best. I've got a big train trip coming up in the next couple of weeks, and I've, the stack of books is our. It's gonna. It's too many books, but <laughs> reading on the train. Where are, and I, Where are you going? I'm gonna try and figure out how to get to Duluth, which should be oh. quite an adventure because the Amtrak doesn't I go directly love, there. I love to do that. You too. Like, I'll let you know how it goes. Anybody have any questions? Lindsay is glad to answer them if you have any. Happy to. Okay. Well. Again, thank you very much. I, I was taking notes furiously. I have things all lined up here. So um, I, I loved all the information. And obviously, you have a real passion for this. So that comes through, too. So that's great. Oh, thank you. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night, Lindsay. And thank you. Have, see you on the trip. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>